as we begin on this Sunday morning, we just first of all do want to thank each and every one for being here at One Accord Church this morning. We're glad to have you all with us and visiting with us. We're blessed to have you here. And all those that are viewing us live, you might be viewing us live on our website, which is oneaccordchurch.net. Again, that website is oneaccordchurch.net. We invite you to go to that website, and you can catch all our services streamed live. Also, for those that's on our television programs, we do want to thank you for tuning in as well. And we'd like to take this opportunity to invite you to come join us at One Accord Church. What do we believe? We believe in the Bible. We believe that the Word of God is the truth that will set us free, and we believe that's the only hope for the nation. Amen? Amen. Come join us if you do not have a church home and you're looking for somewhere that just simply believes in the Bible. Well, this morning, I, I noticed my wife was telling everybody about our VBS, our Vacation Bible School, that's coming up. Um, and it's about archaeologists digging and finding stuff and sand and digging, right? And um, it's about digging up, uh, trying to find lost treasures and that thing. And, um, and I, honestly, it was kind of ironic because I honestly did not put the two together. And uh, this morning, this, this is the message that is on my heart to, to talk to us about, to share with us this morning. It, the and time of this message is kind of strange. Stop retreating and start advancing. Dig in. You say, well, that sounds kind of, well, you, under, the opposite of retreat is advance. And also advance, if you look up, advance means to, to do what? Dig in, right? Stop going back or start digging in no matter what it takes and move forward. Well, this message today is, is, is hopefully for the church in general because um, we've had a lot of circumstances that have happened throughout the couple of years now and, and, and it seems like that Satan is trying to get the church to retreat and it's time to stop retreating it's time to start advancing it's time for the church to dig in and, and grab hold and start moving forward because let me tell you something our job is not done there are too many lost souls out there that need Jesus. Amen? Amen? That's what our job is. That's what we've been commissioned to do is as Christians is to go out to reach the lost and do at all costs. To, to, this is what we're here to do. Not to retreat and wait for Jesus to come. No. Amen? Jesus has already empowered us with the tools necessary to move forward. Right? Well, if we've got all the tools in the world and if we don't have what it's no good laborers we got to have people willing to pick up the shovel Amen. dig in Amen. that's right if somebody told you there's 20 million dollars buried in gold coins under this place and it's 20 foot deep how many of us would grab a shovel and start digging even if we couldn't walk good talk good see good We'd be digging that hole, wouldn't we? Well, let me tell you something. We need, we need to quit, keep digging is because there's too many souls amen. out there that are lost that we need to find. We need to get, amen? Yeah. Well, I want us to begin this by following in the footsteps of one of our first missionaries ever. Uh, and that, this actually, I'm going to be going in the book of Acts if you'd like to take your Bibles and turn with me in the book, book of Acts. My first place I'm going is Acts 13, verse 13. And when we follow these footsteps of these first missionaries, we, we need to understand um, they went from Antioch to Cyprus, preaching in the synagogues. And in fact, these were some of the most exciting missionary accounts of pioneer missionaries that we've ever seen. They started this. When Jesus came here to earth and, and, and whenever he went to the cross, it was, a, it, it was an explosion of evangelism. It was an explosion reaching all the world. Amen? If you will, look at Acts 13, 13. Now when Paul and his company lose from Paphos, they came to Perga and to Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. 
Now, in that scripture, says, and John departing from them returned to Jerusalem. John, surnamed Mark. That's who that is referring to. Now, I want just to open up, first of all, to understand that they had a, a task at hand. It was about 170 miles from Perger to the preparation of where they needed to be. Let me tell you what they didn't have. Vehicles. 170 miles to these people. They didn't pack up baloney and sodas. They didn't have air conditioning. 170 miles that they went. Can you imagine? If I told you, y'all, we need to walk 170 miles to go, go evangelize. I got a better one for you. They holding a revival. It's only 170 miles and you can't drive. How many of you would be at that revival? Apparently nobody. <laughs> Not even the preacher. <laughs> I'm just saying, that would be just a little too much. Lord, you're going to have to help me here. But just picture how on fire these missionaries were. They went 170 miles to establish and build churches. And we complain. Oh, well. I'm not going there. Their air conditioner is not working. I'm not going there. I have to travel 15 20 minutes. I know that I know that ain't going to get no amens. But look, suppose we had to do what they had to do. They went from Patmos from Paphos to Perga and to um, Pamphylia. Boy, these words trying to tongue twisting in. And 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 the, one of the greatest problems that they faced is what this message is about in Perga. The, the departing disciple, he, John Mark, which is Mark, we know in, in the Gospels is Mark. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But John Mark, I'm going to use Mark, uh, he was what they called the departing disciple. Um, there was some rough goings ahead. In fact, um, the bottom line of it is, is the, he says in Acts 13 that he decided that he didn't want to go no further. Early on in his ministry, Mark, it was like, yeah, I want to go, I want to go. Then all of a sudden, before Paul and all of them started to go on this long trip, he said, no, I believe I'm going home. Um, I, I, I'm not so sure about this trip. So how do we tie that in to stop retreating, start advancing, dig in? See, sometimes we got to do things we don't want to do. But how, how, what's the worth of a soul? What would we do if that was someone, one of our loved ones? How far would we go to reach them? I bet you you would look at this a whole lot different if that was your child or your grandchild. If your grandchild or child called you and they were in a bad, bad place and they might have put themselves there. If they'd have said, Mama... Please come get me. I, I've messed up. Please come get me. I'm in a place I don't need to be. We'd go. If my little grandchildren were all somewhere and they said, Papa, please come get me. I, I, I don't like where I'm at. You'd be surprised what we do. Listen, why am I saying this to you? We're all God's children. Amen. Right? We are God's children. God is our Father. Whenever we get out there in a place we don't need to be and we call on Father God, what does He do? He shows up. He, the Holy, he sends the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you back on the right path. Amen. God, God will never what? Leave us or forsake us. But now, going back to Mark, now Mark decided that he just wasn't ready to keep moving on, so he de departed. Mark, his first impulse at missionary service was to, to go, but then he turned back and wanted to go back to Jerusalem. He wanted to go home. This brings me to my first point. Christians have mountains to cross. 
Every single one of us in this room and everybody listening, listen, everybody goes through difficulties, right? We know that from Mark, if you read the scriptures, in fact, I'm going to ask them to put uh, Acts 12, 12 up there. If you really do a background check, check on Mark, Mark come from a well-to-do family. He had plenty of people around. And in fact, the reason he probably turned around and went back was considering this because he was thinking about what he was leaving behind and where he was going. In fact, in Acts 12, 12, he says, And when he had considered the things, he came to the house of Mary. Now, who is he? Peter had considered these things. The mother of John, which is John Mark, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together and praying. So he come from a well-to-do place. So I'm pretty sure whenever he figured that this missionary journey was getting a little too difficult, he decided, he even, the scripture said we just read, he turned back, he wanted to go back to Jerusalem. Jerusalem was his home. Jerusalem was all his comfort places. So what did he do? He turned around. In fact, someone once said that that's, isn't always the best start in life to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth. The tragedy of modern civilization, the tragedy of modern youth. You say, where is he going? Well, the bottom line of it is, here's the mistake that lies in, in, this, in this scripture. A lot of people nowadays says, well, I won't have to work. I don't have to work. I don't want my children or I don't want my children to have to go through what I went through. I don't want them to have to work like I worked. Well, the proof's in the pudding. I don't really have to go no further with that situation. Amen. You know, we need to understand something. Um, maybe given our youth and I, don't, I love my youth, so I'm not really putting them down. But listen, sometimes we can go overboard. We're trying to make it so easy that we're actually doing more damage than we are good for our children. I had someone tell me, says, well, I don't want them to have to go through what I went through. And then they come to me and says, well, my son's out there on drugs. I gave him a, I told him I was going to let him choose whether he wanted to go to church or not. And I said, well, there was your first problem. And, uh, and they said, well, he's, 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 he's messed up on drugs. And uh, I said, well, it, if you'd have done it Jesus' way, then he would have been drugged to church, drugged to this. Drug the vacation Bible school, drug the Wednesday night services, drunk the drunk. You, you got me the drug. I'd rather them be on that drug than I would them to be on the drugs that Satan's got for them. I, 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 and I love y'all, so please don't get offended. God didn't put you here to be the, your children's friend. Only He put you here to be the parents. People don't understand this. Well, I, I want them to have everything I didn't have. Listen, I learned one thing, and I'm not going, I, I'm not telling my age. <laughs> but when I wanted a car, guess what? J O B. I had, and listen, that's how you got it. It was hard. But let me tell you something. When I got that thing, that Galaxy 500 Ford, that was longer than this church. I had a trunk that you could put 20 people in the back. Had a seat so long back yonder. That I'm telling you. I paid $500 and it was in great condition. But let me tell you something. I like to wash the paint off that thing. Didn't have nowhere to go so I stole mama's vacuum cleaner. Like wore it, slam out, trying to keep it clean. I mean, I, I look, everything, you, you, you did everything to take care of it because it, it meant so much to you. We live in a society that it don't care about nothing. Amen. You'll buy me another one. I ain't worried about it. And, 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 and what bothers me is, is I see 
how that um, people have basically got the wrong concept. That's the reason why. Now, why am I going off on that limb? You're thinking crossing mountains. Listen, that means that sometimes we have to sacrifice. Sometimes we need to, to uh, understand that um, we need to work for things to appreciate them. Now, now Mark was from a, 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 a well-to-do family. And he decided, well, I'm not, I, I, I ain't got to do this. I'm, I'm going back home. Uh, the, the heck with that. Well, you got to understand something. When you serve Jesus, you've been commissioned to cross mountains. To face the task at hand. The, 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 what the church can't do is to retreat in, the worst, in one of the worst battles we're facing with Satan right now. The church can't retreat because of what the world is saying is okay and acceptable. The church can't retreat when it says, um, you, know, that, you know, my son's going to college, but they, their elective is uh, occults. Their elective is satanic. No, I, I got news. You do. We have a choice. And we have a choice of what we accept. Now Mark, he decided that he didn't want to cross this mountain. So he turned around and he went back. Now that really messed him up for a while as we will see. But there's a lot of people that had to go through mountain circumstances to get to their promised land. There are a lot of people that had to go through mountainous circumstances to get to God's promise for them. Now, you take Moses. Moses, his, his mountain was Pharaoh. All right? He, to free Israel. So Moses' mountain was this enemy that did not believe in God, that didn't even like Moses, that, that wanted all bad for Israel. But did Moses conquer that mountain? Yes, he did because, listen, he didn't see how big the mountain was. He focused on how big God is. See, we living in a society now that, that, that's focusing on the problem being greater than the solution. David. What was David's mountain? Well, it was literally a mountain called Goliath. But right? But in order to, to get to defeat this enemy and, and to uh, defend Israel, David had to beat this mountain. Now, little old David was little in stature. And if you know anything about Goliath, he was from them Anakites, them big folks. And they were tall. Poor little old David was small. In fact, David was so small when the king gave him the armor, David couldn't even wear it. David put it on and says, my goodness, I can't even move my arm. This thing's heavier than I am. Here, you keep it. God brought me here. God will bring me through it. Amen. So what David did was he, he realized that his mountain was a big one. But listen, David, I love David because David was a man after God's own heart. David looked at the problem and he looked at him and started laughing. That giant had to be going, boy, I almost feel bad crunching you. You, you, you. Is this all they going to sin? Are you serious? But see, David walked by faith, not by sight. David didn't see this as a big problem. He saw that he served a big God. Amen. So he fired what he had, and God took care of business. Look, many mountains are out there today for every one of us. Everybody in this room and everybody listening, you're facing some kind of mountain circumstance. Some people are facing uh, bullying, ridicule because you're a Christian. Financial stress. Everybody could probably say amen to that, right? How about families being destroyed and, 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 and the family unit being forsaken? How about physical suffering? Amen? Yeah. Stress. Right? Family problems. Physical, it's so many mountains that we all face. But here's the deal. We can't get focused on the problem and not focus on the solution. Do you know who God, who gave the physicians their knowledge 
and wisdom and understanding to learn how to do heart transplants. Do you know who give them that knowledge? God give it to them, right? If God give them the knowledge, do you think God probably knows a little bit more than they do? Did God not give them the knowledge to take one heart out and put another one in? Okay, so if God can show them how to take one out and put another one in, I'm kind of sure that God probably can fix that heart without even moving it. I'm kind of sure about this, but don't take my word for it. Ask God. But I'm sure that he took the lame that has never walked. I'm, I'm kind of sure that he said, get up, take your bed, and go. He didn't say, look, hold on, let me send a physical therapy to you because we're going to have to teach you how to walk. I'm pretty sure when them lepers was healed, um, I'm pretty sure it just went... Right? I'm pretty sure when them blind folks, when he healed them, that they could see without any problems whatsoever. I'm kind of sure that that man that was on the seashore with legions of demons, when he set him free and set him in his right frame of mind to the point that nobody didn't recognize who he was, I'm pretty sure that the Lord just took care of it right there on the spot. See, we all face mountains in our lives. But the question of it is, are we going to stand there and look at this mountain? Or are we going to get our eyes back on God that made the mountains? Are we going to get our eyes on God that can take care of that mountain? See, the circumstances of life are never going to change. They're never going away. You know, it says, well, I serve God and I, I, I go to church and I pay my tithes and I do the best I can. So why in the world is it happening to me? Why me? The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. God's no respecter of persons. The bottom line of it is things happen. The problem of it is that we're missing the point on when it comes to how Christians have mountains to cross. Is Here's this. Lost people, yes, they don't know where to go and what to do. But what's disheartening is the Christian. At like they don't know where to go and what to do. Yeah, yeah. We, for centuries, have been preaching the word of God. And everybody still goes out and says, Well, you hear about what happened to me. Be praying for me. What do you think God's going to do? He's probably going. They don't get it. I can tell by their request that they're focused on the problem rather than focused on the solution. I know we say, well, there was no cancer back in biblical days. Let me tell you something. Do some research about what leprosy and yeah. all these other yeah. diseases that they give names that they didn't know. Yeah. We're just so highly sophisticated right now that we've given every sickness a name. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Disease is disease. Yeah. Yeah. But see, the bottom line of it is that Jesus didn't... Put, the word of God wasn't given to us so that we could read it and tell our children stories. But listen, he said, faith. Yes. He said, faith. You've got to have faith. And why do I put in this dig in? Faith means you've got to dig in because sometimes your circumstances is pushing you down. You've got to dig in and say, I don't care what, what you say. I'm not, I'm not putting my faith in you. Thank you for your report. But see, my faith relies on an almighty God. I'm not trusting in you. I'm going to let the Lord know I believe in him. Amen. How are you going to do that? Praise the Lord. Amen. See, whenever a doctor tells you something ain't good, praise the Lord. What do you mean praise the Lord? Because you're not in control. Amen. See, my God is. My God is a whole lot bigger than your words. But it depends on my faith. Well, how much faith must I have? A faith of a... I, I don't know about you. But without my glasses, I can't see it. I'm telling you honestly. You put a mustard seed in my hand and take my glasses off, I won't see it. 
So what is God saying? Y'all wake up and stay with me. What is God saying? Revelation to you. He's not asking you to have mighty faith. He's just asking you to have a must seed faith in a mighty God. I don't have enough faith. I just don't have enough faith. No, you're just not using what little bit you got on God. God created everything. So I'm pretty sure he can handle our mountains. Now, Mark, he kind of retreated. Retreating is the problem. Leads me to the second part. Christians must not retreat from the task that's been given us. You want God to move in your circumstances? Show God that you're willing to work for him. Not just come to him when you've got problems. I want you to take, stay in Acts and go to Acts 15, 37. And Mark's desire uh, to come back once he messed up. Now Mark messed up. He retreated, didn't go with Paul and them and Silas. He said, I'm going back. Now all of a sudden we, we go down the road a little bit and, and we read something else that's happened here. In, in Acts chapter 15, I'm sorry, Acts 15, 37. Turn it out and you're going to see something because even though he retreated, the Lord didn't leave him alone. Mark says, man, I... I just can't, I got to get back in, I got to get back into this. I can't just sit back and, and not do what God's called me to do. I, I got to keep moving forward. And in fact, in, in Acts 15, 37, and Barnabas determined to take with him John, with him John, whose surname was Mark. To understand the story, Paul says, no, I don't want you to bring him. Last time we brought him, man, he took off and left us. He deserted us. He wouldn't even stay with us. No, I don't think you need to take him. But see, Mark's desire and to, to talk to his, his cousin, his kin voice says, look, I messed up, but I'm ready to get back in the battle. I'm ready to get back and I, I'm ready to get back in this fight. Church, listen, we sat back long enough waiting for the government and everybody else to try to get things right. It's time for the church to step back up and be the church. Amen. Listen, the world is dealing with a lot of mess. I mean, Satan is using everything he can to destroy the church. Listen, Satan can't do nothing to the church that we don't let him. Amen. He can't. It's up to us to let him. And we're letting him. Now, like Mark, the world is retreating. How do I know this? All we got to do is look around us. Take a look at the person that's uh, overindulgent or, or alcoholic. He's retreating. Those that have gone from um, praising God to taking God's name in vain, they're retreating. How about unfaithful relationships? Do you know they've done a survey? That said because of COVID-19 and how long it's been here. That, that the, the violence and the domestic, domestic abuse has more than tripled. Satan used this opportunity to rob the church. Retreating. How about the liar? When people are lying. If you don't believe me, just watch the government. Retreating. The church in general is lying. What? No, the church can't lie. That's a sin. All liars shall have their part in the, the church can't lie. Oh yeah. Oh yes. When we tell our family and loved ones sin is okay. When we tell them 
it's not, it's a little white lie. It's okay. When we start judging people by the color of the skin instead of the color of the heart, it's not okay. Whenever we realize that we judge Christianity by the plaque that's on your door, it's not okay. Whenever we decide that we want to take away or add to the word of God, it's not okay. Every bit of this I'm telling you about is a retreat. We're retreating when we say that this right here is it, the Old Testament and the New Testament are a thing of the past. It's not okay. Whenever we decide that we take the Ten Commandments side of the White House, the schoolhouse, the church house, and every other house, it's not okay. Amen. Whenever we have got to get special permission to pray in schools, it's not okay. Amen. We retreated to the fact now that every church, every corner of every road, if a business goes out, somebody opens up doors and calls it a church. It's not okay. We only serve one Savior. His name is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And listen, Jesus was not about division Amen. and conquering. Amen. Jesus was all about one and one accord together. The 12 disciples, they weren't Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Free Will Baptist. They were all believers in Jesus Christ. The church was destroyed and we're retreating. The church is retreating. And the problem of it is, problems are never really solved by retreating from them. People say, well, I don't, I don't know about your church. I said, it's God's church. Y'all don't have no outline for what you believe. I said, yeah, we do. There you go. The Lord wrote it for us. Yeah. But how do you feel about the Holy Ghost? <laughs> you got to have him. Amen. Are y'all loud or proud or quiet and dead? We're just Christians. Amen. Respectfully believing in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Remembering it's okay. Because some people are loud. Some people are quiet. It's all right. Your soul is what I'm worried about. Not your mouth. Amen. Because if y'all think we're going to get to heaven... Hello, Abraham. I understand the rich man that died and went the own way, and I'm coming to the bosom of Abraham. That's true. Well, do you have a Pentecostal side? <laughs> I'm more of a quiet type God. I, I don't like a lot of noise. Do you have a Presbyterian side over here somewhere? <laughs> Lord, I love to drink. I understand some of your religions allow that. Do you have a place that has a bar? I understand, Lord, people say that marijuana is going to be illegal. And, and certain, some of that juice you can use. And I understand, Lord, some religions believe that that's a plant that created by God. Can I go on that side, Lord? Kind of stupid, isn't it? That's just the way... Satan works. Amen. Because he's divided the church. Let me tell you. The word of God has got to an answer. Yes. For everything that you're thinking about doing. Yes, Lord. The Holy Spirit will lead and guide you in all truth. Let me tell you something. Someone says, well they don't say anything in there about drugs. Yes it does. Because it alters your mind. Yes. Abstain from stuff that messes you up. Right. Listen. I can go on and on. People say, well, alcohol, his first, his first miracle was wine. Yeah, well, you need to do the study of Greek and Hebrew. He just took the old grapes and fruits and done away with them and put them in a new skin. And it was only a, 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 a wine from the grapes and vineyards that was pure. Something that God created. I'm telling you without a doubt, there was not no liquor stills up in the mountains in, 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 in Jerusalem.
It didn't take them long to figure it out, but it wasn't there to start with. Uh, throughout the Bible, we've tried to turn things around like we want them. Let me say what we can't turn around. Sin is sin. Amen. Well, I'm just a little sinner. I don't sin a lot. Retreat. You know what? If we want God to advance in our circumstances, we got to stop retreating to sin. If we want God to move in our circumstances, we got to dig in and stand for what's right. Amen. If people are sitting around you in a restaurant, and this might not be very popular, but, and they're using God's name in vain, let me tell you something. Pray louder. Yes. If they can cuss loud, I can pray loud. Amen. Don't be ashamed of him, because he said, if you be ashamed of me, then I'm going to be ashamed of you. You know what? Satan has had no problem voicing what he thinks. The problem is that the retreating church is not voicing what God wants us to voice. Paul says, be bold. Be bold. And speak the word of God with truth. There's been always problems in, 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 in trying to be lukewarm Lukewarm. What did he say he's going to do if the church is lukewarm? Anybody want to suggest it? Spew you out of my mouth. What does that? What does lukewarm mean? Well, I, I'm 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 not all that, and I'm not all that. I, I, a little church, a little world. Well, Jesus says, <laughs> lukewarm. Sorry. What does that mean? It means that God will not move on a lukewarm church. It means that we've got to be rooted, grounded, dug in to believing and doing it God's way. I still believe, that might be ignorance, but I still believe God's in the healing business. Amen. I believe God's in the restoring business. Amen. I believe that because I believe that the day a sinner accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he saved, set free, redeemed, not going to hell, going to heaven. And that's the greatest miracle God's ever given us. And it's free. So if he can change the destination from hell to heaven, I think he can handle the rest of it. But that's the problem. See, we can't retreat. And like Mark, Mark decided, uh-oh, I messed up. So he come back. God wanted him back, but Paul and the other one says, no, we already seen what he's done. Let me tell you something, and this is what God put on my heart. We got, when people mess up, we don't need to condemn them. Amen. When someone falls short and goes back to where they were like Mark, he went back home. He didn't want to have to deal with what was going on. But listen, when someone messes up, we're not to condemn. You know what happens when we condemn? Judge ye not for ye shall be judged listen leave that work to almighty God Amen. people says I'm a fruit inspector well that was your first mistake you made right there because I've all learned, Lord taught me a long time ago because when I first went to ministry I thought because I was a preacher I knew it all yes come ask me I'm holier than thou I can figure this out what do you think about what I'm done? Boy, I'm going to tell you, the Lord let me know. Shut up. I'm going to go on and tell you right now, before you open your mouth up, I want you to stop and reflect on how you got here. Yeah. And I realize one thing. He says, judge not. Jesus says, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing. Amen. Jesus told him, he, he said, how many times, Peter said, how many times must I forgive? Seven times, seven times, seven times, forever. And here we are in a society. Do you know why the society is messed up and why it's retreating? Because we live in an unforgiving world. Go to that church. They forgive you. Go to this and um, they won't hold it against you. Listen. When your child messes up and says, Mama, I'm sorry. I, I messed up. Will you please forgive me? What's the mama going to say? I forgive you. Yeah. But let a Christian mess up. 
He's done stoned and hell bound. If I had a dollar for every single church throughout the years that says, Oh Lord, you better look out for that one. They messed up in our church. I said, well, what did you do when they messed up? Well, they're looking at another church, aren't they? I said, well, there you go. I wish the church was full of perfect people. <laughs> it would just be wonderful. But it ain't going to happen. Amen. I'm just going to go on and tell you. A church is most of the time full of broken people. Yes. That acknowledge it. So how do we win people? How do we re stop retrieving? Stop playing God. And stop being who we are. Sinners saved by grace. Nothing you did. You didn't deserve it. So God give it to you. So what are we supposed to do? Give it away. Christians must advance by looking to Jesus. Listen, herein lies the problem. The difference in problems for the Christian and the world. Now, I want you to listen to this. I want you to take your Bibles. I'm not going to get through this other scripture. But look at Corinthians chapter 12. A difference is when Christians have problems, where do we go? Okay, a lost person that don't know Jesus in the world, where do they go? Satan. So listen, what are we supposed to do? Show them the way. We as Christians, are we in a battle alone? I got a diagnosis of cancer. Are you in that battle alone? I lost my job today. I, I, I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet. Are you in that battle alone? No. No matter what you're going through, listen, he's, God can't lie. Because he is the truth. Right? So we must believe in that beyond all aspect of what the world says. Listen to what Paul said in, in, in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7. And least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. People kill me with this. Wonder what that thorn was. Read your Bible. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. Anybody get buffeted by Satan? You can relate. Right? Guess what? I'm pretty sure it was between his two ears. What's the worst problem you have? Your mind. Listen to what he said. Least I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice. How many times is thrice? That it might depart from me. He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. In your weakness, Paul. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I got to say that to you again. I know, she, But listen, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Listen, Paul said it. Where does God show up the most powerful? In our weakness. He says, I'm going to glory in my infirmities. He says, I'm going to, he said, no matter what I'm going through, he says, I, I need the power of God. Whenever you're going through something, we need who? God. So he said, Listen to this. Most gladly, therefore, I'd rather glory. Glory. Everybody say glory. glory. In my infirmities. So that, why am I going to glory in my infirmities? Now that, okay, let's translate. How, why am I going to praise God when I'm sick? Why in the world am I going to praise God when I lost my job? Why am I going to praise God because my marriage is going down the drain? Why am I going to praise God when my kids are out on drugs and alcohol? Why am I going to praise God when my whole world's a train wreck? I'll tell you why. Because Paul said it, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 
I don't know how to say this to you, but I'm going to try. We have gotten a society and we have convinced ourselves when we're going through stuff, doom, gloom, despair, agony on me. Sound like a song. But the bottom line of it is, here's the deal. Satan says, hey, look, you got a problem. Now, feel bad, act bad, act mad. See, that's a lie. Paul says, I want the power of Christ in my infirmity. So, okay, here's my infirmity. Okay, let's just say I've been given a diagnosis. Oh, I've been given a diagnosis and this is what the doctor said. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Paul says, glory in your infirmities. Start praising God right there. Doctor says, I got this. Praise glory to God. What's wrong with you on drugs? No, no. I'm going to praise God because why? I want the power of God in what I'm going through right now. I'm not going to leave this doctor's office with doom and gloom and distress and bitterness and anger. I'm going to glory in Christ right now because, see, I want God to show up right now. Cancer, you're not going to start here. It ends here. I'm not going to let that you win this battle. Amen. This is how we what? Fight our battles. And this is so important. Mark came back. He, did, he retreated but he come back. And then he got on fire. Mark done some great things. The gospel of Mark. He recorded so much because he came back to where he belonged. God wants to work in our lives. He wants to work in our infirmities. He wants to, but listen, the power of God is not going to show up until we totally surrender Amen. our will to his will. Amen. We have reached a point in life that lukewarm Christianity has got to stop. We got to dig in and take hold because you, you ain't seen nothing yet. This world, by leaps and bounds, it's getting worse and worse and worse. But what bothers me is the condition of the church. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Are we here so that we can sit back and, 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 and watch everything fall apart? No. Let me tell you who you are. You're a blood-bought child of God. Amen. You've been recreated in the image and the likeness of Almighty God. You've been born again. You've been set apart, set free, set aside. We are heirs with Almighty God. Yeah. Jesus is our friend. He's our Redeemer. Amen. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and He's our Father. Amen. And that's who we are. We got to quit walking around like the world is coming to the end. Well, the world is going to come to an end, but you are no longer a part of the problem. We are part of the solution. God's just waiting for us to wake up, show up, and show him that we believe it. And that's only going to start with you. I can preach to you till I pop. But what you believe yeah. in here yeah. will affect yeah. what's going on around you. Yeah. Well, pastor, and I've heard this. I'm scared to pray for somebody's healing because they might not get it. You didn't pray for you to get nothing. You're praying for God's will to be done. Amen. Amen. You act like you're trying to take on God's job. You can't do it. Amen. What you can do is what God give you power to do. Proclaim his word. Yeah. Believe it. When someone comes at me and says, I want to pray. Do you, will you pray for my healing? I'm going to pray for Jesus to give you the healing he Amen. wants you to have. Amen. Thy will be Amen. done, Lord. Yes, Lord. Listen, God's word is great. God's will is great. God's purpose is great. But until we get these off of this and get this back where it belongs, we will never win this battle. I will take my last breath here on earth believing. Why? Because I want to believe in the word of God. When I take my last breath, I want to believe that I'm going to heaven. Amen. Amen. I can't just believe a little bit. I've got to believe it all. So if I believe that I'm going to heaven... Are you going to heaven? Yes. You believe it. Yes. Nobody's going to talk you out of it. 
I wish we had the faith of a mustard seed that believed that that same power that's going to carry you to heaven. It's that same power that will deliver you, that will heal you and restore you. Yes, the Lord. day that the church wakes up and says, ha ha, but just believe. Amen. I'm going to heaven. Yes, I am. I got saved. I'm going to heaven. Yes, you are. Now take on a healing. Jesus told the man, he says, thy sins be forgiven thee. Yes. He said, but wait a minute. He asked for healing. He said, thy sins be forgiven thee. What's the difference? Whether I forgive you and send you to heaven or whether I heal you. It's just still the same power and authority. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. But we can walk out and do the church thing. Thank you, Pastor. Wonderful job. Great message. And go home and waller in your problems. Y'all know I'm right. Come on. You might as well admit it. But, or oh, we could say, Jesus, today's the day. Today's the day that I continue to walk by faith. Today's the day I put down everything that's separating me from you. Today's the day, Lord, I dig in and I have faith that no matter how long I have to wait, no matter what it takes, my faith and trust is in you and Amen. nothing will stop me from believing. Amen. I'm going to receive that by faith today. It might seem impossible, but God said all things are possible to those that believe. All things are possible to those that believe. This morning, I want to ask you.